Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay. Today we are going to use awesome Kurt's notes to talk about spindle cell lesions of the breast. <laughs> you would think there's not a lot, but there's a lot. If you haven't been to Kurt's notes, you've got to check out the website. It's got great resources for pathology residents. So let's begin with PASH. Pseudoangiomatous stromal overgrowth. Now say that 15 times really fast while standing on one leg. Joking. So this is a proliferation of myofibroblasts among collagenous stroma forming anastomosing slit-like channels, hence pseudoangiomatous because they look like vessels, but if you look at them closely, they don't have any red blood cells. It's non-neoplastic and it's thought to be an aberrant stromal response to hormones. It's often incidentally found in gynecomastia cases and sometimes can present as a mass forming lesions. So on a biopsy, if you see PASH but nothing else, you can suggest that the mass may represent or is PASH. Let's talk about myofibroblastoma. Do you like molecular like I do? I thought so. <laughs> so this is due to a mutation in 13Q14 uh, that contains retinoblastoma 1, RB1, and there are two other entities that my staff like to ask me on that also have RB1 deletion, and they are spindle cell lipoma slash pleomorphic lipoma, as well as cellular angiofibroma. So let's begin with it, myofibroblastomas are benign tumors of mammary stroma composed of fibroblasts and myofibroblasts, and the clinical presentation is a slow-growing, painless mass that's cured by local excision. It's purely mesenchymal, not like a fibroepithelial lesion like a fibroadenoma. Uh, it is well circumscribed, but unencapsulated, and has bland, spindled cells, and has interspersed thick collagen bundles, as you can see here. There's minimal mites and atypia, and it's positive for Desmond, CD34, ER, PR, AR, and loss of retinoblastoma 1. Okay, let's talk about one of my favorite entities, desmoid fibromatosis. So the way to identify this by IHC is beta-catenin. Now, beta-catenin is normally expressed membranously, but due to a mutation in the APC beta-catenin CTNNB1 pathway, desmoid fibromatosis will be expressed Beta-catenin will be expressed nuclearly. Um, these are benign, but they're considered intermediate in terms of soft tissue tumors because it's locally infiltrative with a strong tendency to recur, greater than 25%. Um, microscopic margins do not predict recurrence, and it's characterized by infiltrative growth into surrounding structures like skeletal muscle and with broad sweeping fascicles you'll have uniform spindled cells. They'll all generally go one direction as opposed to a neural fibroma, which have the quote unquote diving dolphins or shredded carrots going in many directions. So let's talk about metaplastic carcinoma. This is basically invasive breast cancer with differentiation of epithelium towards squamous or mesenchymal looking elements, it's rare, uh, representing less than 1% of all breast cancers. And there are several distinct patterns, but sometimes it's a spectrum and there is some overlap. There is low-grade adenosquamous carcinoma, as you can see here. Uh, it's well-developed rounded glands and tubules associated with solid squamous nests infiltrating through desmoplastic stroma. Uh, sometimes if you see lymphoid aggregates, it'll look like cannonball lymphoid aggregates, and it has good prognosis. Then it, there is fibromatosis-like metaplastic carcinoma. It kind of looks like your desmoid tumor. Um, it's bland spindle cells with pale eosinophilic cytoplasm and slender nuclei in stroma with variable collagen, only mild nuclear atypia and arranged in fascicles. Uh, some cells may be epithelioid, uh, also has good prognosis. Okay, you have spindle cell carcinoma, which is atypical spindle cells with a variety of architectural patterns, fascicles, herringbone. It's elongate to plump, 
spindled cells with moderate to high-grade cellular atypia. It's often associated with inflammation and includes a spectrum of tumors from sarcomatoid squamous cell carcinoma to myoepithelial carcinoma, and it has worse prognosis. Uh, there is squamous cell carcinoma that is pure squamous cell carcinoma that is often cystic and uh, has worse prognosis. And there is metaplastic carcinoma with heterologous mesenchymal differentiation. Now say that 50 times really fast. I'm uh, joking. Uh, essentially a carcinosarcoma where you have uh, malignant elements both epithelial and stromal. Um, heterologous elements include chondroid, as you can see here, osseous and rhabdoid components. Uh, the epithelial and mesenchymal components can have variable atypia and sometimes you need extensive sampling to find the epithelial component. And by doing that, you exclude a primary sarcoma. Um, the vast majority of metaplastic carcinomas are triple negative. Uh, they do express some epithelial markers, including P63, high molecular weight cytokeratin, CK56, and CKA1, AE3. Um, they'll often have a frequent TP53, PIK3CA, and WINT pathway mutations. Okay. Now we got those out of the way. How about vas uh, vascular lesions? You can have hemangioma, which is a benign proliferation of mature blood vessels, usually non-palpable and found on imaging. It is non-neoplastic. Um, you'll have endothelium without nuclear atypia. Excision is not necessary. Uh, you have your atypical vascular lesion. This is kind of the intermediate stage before it becomes an angiosarcoma. Um, benign occurs in irradiated skin. Uh, for instance, after surgery, you have uh, adjuvant treatment, including radiation, if you, especially if you have lymph node metastasis. Um, you'll have irregularly shaped thin-walled vessels with branching and anastomotic growth. It's lined by a single layer of endothelium with some hobnailing and hyperchromasia. Uh, there is no endothelial multilayering or true cytologic atypia. Um, there will be no MYC overexpression. So if you're concerned with atypical vascular lesion or an angiosarcoma arising from radiation treatment, you can do a MYC to differentiate. Um, so angiosarcoma, it's malignant, it's very aggressive, typically in the elderly, uh, has variable degrees of vascular differentiation. Um, some areas show well-formed anastomosing vesicles, while other areas may show solid sheets of high-grade cells, uh, can be epithelioid or spindled, and often extensively hemorrhagic. And not relating to breast per se, but like your differential for angiosarcoma is Kaposi sarcoma, and an HHV8 will be helpful in um, determining, if it's positive, Kaposi's. Um, unlike benign lesions like hemangiomas, uh, there will be significant cytologic atypia. Like, look at that Goomba right there. Necrosis, endothelial cells piling up, multilayering, and uh, plus or minus mitotic figures. GRADE does not predict prognosis because all of them are aggressive. And when I say angiosarcoma, especially in the breast, you want to think either just angiosarcoma or post-radiation angiosarcoma. The time frame is usually five years, give or take, after radiation. There is high level of MYC amplification, so that's how you can differentiate post-radiation from angiosarcoma and atypical vascular lesion. Okay, we're almost there. Hang on. Hold your horses. All right, adenomyoepithelioma. Adeno myoepithelioma, biphasic proliferation of inner ductal cells and outer myoepithelial cells. It's analogous to an epithelial myoepithelial carcinoma of the salivary gland. You can think of the breast as a, a, a different, different salivary gland. Uh, it has ducts, it has asinine. Um, so there are very pa various patterns, but can be tubular with prominent myoeps with clear cytoplasm, as you can see here or have spindled myoebs with admix ducts, as you can see here. 
Uh, typically in the older woman with a palpable mass, usually benign, but can de-differentiate into a carcinoma. Okay, we talked about these lesions, but other lesions that are spindled include nodular fasciitis, where you're, you'll have your tissue culture like a cell pattern. You'll have the inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor where you want to get an ALK. A schwannoma, which is well encapsulated, as opposed to a neurofibroma, which is not encapsulated and goes in all directions, as opposed to a desmoid fibromatosis. You have granular cell tumor, which have a lot of mitochondria and appear granular. A leiomyoma versus a leiomyosarcoma. Um, you have a lipoma, angiolipoma, which has fibrin thrombi, and a liposarcoma. So. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and until next time, Patagonia.